Hello everyone and welcome back to our WebAssembly tutorial. This will be episode number two and today we're going to be looking at our first function exports. Um, so we'll start by just going back to our hello world example and we'll just create our uh, wrapping.c file which will just be our main file. We'll do include standard io.h uh, and we'll do int main. We'll print out hello world and return zero. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and compile this. And what's actually cool is that you can, um, with EMCC, you can compile to a different object, so or a different file name. You don't have to compile to the a dot out. So you can specify a name. So we'll say EMCC, and it's going to be wrapping dot c dash o wrapping dot js. There. And then if we go back to our directory, we see that we have wrapping.js and wrapping.wasm. Now in an HTML file, I just created a little simple one. We can include the script. Source will be wrapping.js. And then we'll go ahead and start streaming our server. And we'll go to the console and we see that we have hello world just like before. But what if we wanted to call hello world at some other point? like? What if I wanted to call hello world 10 seconds afterwards, or uh, when I clicked a button, or when I received a, a web request, something like that. Um, so that's what we're gonna be looking at today. And that will be, that's, that's gonna be the motivation for exporting our functions. So we wanna be able to call a function, and I mean, I suppose we could, uh, let's say we'll do an int test add, and we'll pass in an int a and an int b. Um, well, actually, I'll just call this add nums for now. And then we'll have the main function, which will print out uh, the addition. And so it'll do percent %d, and we'll print out add nums 3 and 5, like so. And then here we'll print, oh, we will return a plus b. So when we recompile, we should get that um, we have hello world comma eight. So we can call functions, but again, we wanna be able to trigger it at some point. And this is where we're going to be exporting functions so that we can just call them at any point that we want. The first part of this is actually going to be in our C code, we have to include mscripten.h. So it's just gonna be a header file and we include it as if it was a library. So mscripten.h, it won't show up, it'll give you a couple errors. Don't worry about it. And this will gives a, give us access. So EMCC recognizes this header file and it'll give us access to certain tags and one of them being mscripten keep alive. So this little tag here allows us to keep these functions alive throughout the process of our uh, HTML file or just the, the process of keeping the page open. And it'll, it'll listen with JavaScript. Um, so we have keep alive and now we need to actually tell the compiler that we want to export these to a JavaScript file. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a different command. It's going to be emcc wrapping.c as usual, dash o wrapping.js. That's also the same, but we need to specify a couple of things. So dash s for switch and then no underscore exit underscore runtime is equal to one. So we're not going to be exiting the runtime. And then we also want to specify an export function. So dash s exported runtime methods is equal to, and it's just gonna be a list and we'll do C call for now, that's all. And we run that and we should get um, nothing new in the directory, um, but the JS file will be a di bit different. The WASM file will be a bit different. It's gonna be optimized now for exporting. Um, but let's go back to our HTML file and let's create uh, a button. So button, and we'll say on click is equal to um, run wasm uh, like that. And then we'll call trigger here. And then we'll have a little script section here where we will define the function. So function run wasm. So at this point, we are including the wrapping.js script file. So our WASM file has been loaded in as 
as per usual. And now we just need to call the actual exported function. And we specified one, ccall. Believe it or not, ccall will allow us to access all of the functions that we exported and well, all of them that have the keep alive tag here. So main and add nums. So let's just try calling main at first. So uh, what we will say is um, we'll have a variable result and we're going to say module. So module is just what comes from wrapping.js module.ccall and we're going to have a few parameters here. So the first one is going to be main. So that's just the string name of our function. Uh, return type, you don't have to specify, but we can also just say number. You can specify it as a string. Argument types is null and argument parameters is also null. And we can go ahead and console log the results. Okay. And if we go back to here, we can see that uh, hello world eight was run as normal because the page was loaded. And if we hit trigger, we get hello world eight because that's what it is called in the print here. But then it also returns zero. So that's we're, we're returning zero from the function int. And that's what we get with this type here. And that's what's stored in result. And then we print out result. Um, so that is just um, that. But let's also try uh, running add nums. So we can also, um, so this is kind of a test function. This gives us general or just specific parameters. But what if we wanted to get input from the web page and then pass it into our WASM code? So the way we can do that is let's just create two text um, text boxes. So we'll say input type is equal to number. I believe that's a thing. Um, and I will say ID is equal to a just like so. And then the same thing. So input type is equal to number and ID is equal to B. So on trigger now we can, we'll still call number and main or we'll still call main. Um, but now we want to call the second function. So we first have to get our values. So uh, var a is equal to, we'll say document dot query selector. Um, and it'll be hashtag a for the ID. And I forget what the, uh, the value is going to be. We get that with dot value, just like that. So dot value there. And then same thing for B. So var B is equal to document dot query selector hashtag B dot value. Okay. And we could print out the sum with console dot log, but why do that when we have our wasm functions? Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same C call. So result is equal to module dot C call. And this time the function name is add nums. So we have to say add nums. The return type is still an integer, so a number. This time we have two parameters. So we have number and number. And then we specify the parameters. So the these were the parameter types. And then we actually specify the arguments. So A and B. And that's in list format. And then we can console.log the results as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see that we have our two values here and they're in number format. So let's say we have five and seven or eight hit trigger. And we see that we have hello world eight, which was the first call. So that was this call here. And then we also console logged the result zero, but then the second call was console log the results from the add function. So we see the 13 here, which is the result. So just to show you that I'm not shitting you, uh, let's do five plus 18. 23. So it can do basic math, but it can also do everything that C does. Um, there's also a second way to import functions, which might be a bit more of a, um, a better way to do it if you want to call a function over and over again. So this is going to be with C wrap. So we're essentially wrapping the function in a JavaScript object. So we don't have to call C call every time. And Let's just specify it saying um, variable add func or we'll say add nums is equal to module 
C wrap. So we're actually going to have to build our WASM file with C wrap. So C call was an exported function. C wrap is also going to be one. So let's actually just do that now. So you go back to the command prompt, same command, except this time you do a comma C wrap in the runtime methods, exported runtime methods and enter. Okay. There was an error there. Um, I know what it is. Uh, there shouldn't be the square brackets around this. So you can just do C call C wrap and there we go. Once again, no new output files, um, but we now have a second exported function. So this will be module.crap, and it, the arguments are going to be the exact same here as for C call. Um, so we're gonna, first going to specify the name. So we'll do uh, the name. We'll do add nums for the export, the crap export. In uh, input type is going to be, or sorry, return type is number, and then argument types are number and number. So notice how I'm specifying add num outside of the function so that this will be used no matter where we are. Um, so now what we can also do is call that as well. So on the button click, uh, we get variable a variable B, and then we can also just now get result is equal to add nums and we pass in a and b so this is just a this gives us a function definition or function pointer if you like and we can just store it in a result as if we were calling c call and then we can console log the result once more and let me go back to my browser reload 15 and negative 3 let's say trigger Hello world eight and zero. That's just from the main call. 12 is from the first C call call. And then the third or the other 12 is from this one here. So let's also try and do another function, subtract num. So we need to do M script in keep alive as before and int subtract nums int a and int B return a minus B. And then the command stays the exact same. That's what's so wonderful about this. And let's go ahead and we'll do a C wrap this time again. So we'll do var subtract nums is equal to module dot C wrap subtract nums is the name. And then it returns a number and takes in two numbers like so. And then we can as before, just say uh, result is equal to subtract nums a and b, and then we console log the results. So let's go back to the browser. So 15, 5, get 20 and 20, which is 15 plus 5, and then 10 is 15 minus 5. So that is our first two export methods with c call and c wrap. Next time we'll be looking at a couple more or one more rather which will be a little bit more of a a more flexible way to do this um, but yeah so that is pretty much all i have for you guys today i'll see you guys in the next one have a good one